Okay, so with um, over 300 million young people out of jobs in the world, we have a crisis on our hand. And uh, at Friends, we've been trying various strategies to give uh, gainful employment to these young people with some successes and some difficulties, and that's what I'm going to drive you through today. Friends International is a social enterprise. We're working with marginalized youth, uh, migrants out of prison, uh, out of work, uh, from the sex industry and so on. And our job is to support them to become productive, functional citizens of their country. And obviously, employment is key for that. Now, obviously, this population is coming f with some very difficult challenges, uh, psychosocial issues, they use drugs, they have trauma, uh, they live through some difficult uh, lives and they need uh, specific support. They're extremely mobile. They come and go in the services, but they also they migrate. So we need to be very flexible in the curriculum and in the rules. Um, they have different levels of education. We have school dropouts, but we also have university students who use drugs. So we need different levels of, um, of job opportunities. Um, there's a lack of self-confidence. Not everyone is a social entrepreneur, not everyone is an entrepreneur, so we need them to be comfortable in starting their own business, but also working in an existing business. And then they have personal issues, uh, family issues, they need money now. So we need to remain very flexible in time, flexible with the duration of the trainings. So over time, we developed a series of uh, employment programs to taking into account these uh, challenges and the first step that we took is the classical vocational training and that's very good because we can then offer a wide range of trainings uh, we can build the curriculum around the needs of these young people specifically um, we have good support because we can attach social workers case managers counselors to them uh, the system is very flexible allows them to move in and out uh, from the services but there are a few issues one the training is long and young people are eager to work, so it doesn't fit for everyone. Um, it's very expensive to run a vocational training center, so we have a huge donor dependency. And uh, it also limits the type of students that we can get, because once you work with marginalized youth, the other youth doesn't feel comfortable joining. So overall, it really limits the, the number of job placements. So as a second step, that we took, we transformed the vocational training into vocational training businesses. So we opened to the public and uh, we run uh, training restaurants, we run training beauty salons, garage and so on. What's good with this model is that it's a very good training. It's hands-on, young people are immediately highly employable and they're ready to work. Uh, it's uh, building flexibility, we could maintain the support that young people need. Um, and it's a good level of sustainability because there's an income coming and uh, we even have profit that can be re-injected into social work. But the problems are still numerous because it limits the type of students, because the training remains long and, and uh, a commitment and it doesn't fit everyone. Um, it's difficult to find funding if we want to replicate and uh, change the trainings because we need investment every time. So again, it limits the number and the type of trainings that we can and job placement that we can propose. So to respond to a few of these issues, specifically for parents initially, we started vocational training that are income generating, like the uh, Let's Eat restaurants, which are small local restaurants offering a very small level, uh, a few dishes only. And it's very good because the sh training is very short. The parents can rapidly uh, start their own business or start their Let's Eat and make money. Uh, it's very cheap to start and it's uh, cheap to run, so it's sustainable. And what's really interesting is when a parent starts its own restaurant, in exchange of the brand and in exchange of the support that we give, we ask them to simply train other parents. And then through eco-dissemination, we suddenly train more and more parents without cost and placing more and more parents with a very limited cost. And then finally, in the last uh, recent step, uh, we started the Futures Offices. And the Futures Offices are employment offices for marginalized youth and parents. Um, they're directly based in communities, we have mobile ones, it's franchised so it's easily replicable, we have now some in Geneva, we have one in uh, Kuala Lumpur starting. It opened up to a wide range of young people, the middle, low middle class young people can join that are usually not touched by NGOs or government services. Uh, it provides still the support that young people need, there's assessments, there's a wide range of training because it's not only friends but other NGOs and also uh, internships and companies. It expands the jobs available to youth and really uh, there's rapid placement and a higher number of placements. But we have a few issues. There needs to be a buy-in from the companies because there's still a stigma attached to these young people. 
there, so companies have a little reluctance. And then there's the issue of cost. Uh, we're still donor dependent. And this leads me to the question I have for you today because I have so many of my colleagues, social entrepreneurs, so I know that you will find the solution for me. We need an income stream coming from those futures offices. And so what I would like to explore with you is how to give me creative new ideas on how we can uh, build the sustainability of the futures offices, looking not only at, at uh, the client, but also at uh, the, the employer, the other actors, and maybe other sources of funding so that we get out of this dependency. Thank you very much. <laughs>